fortitude for, to stand up for sovereignty and uh, to, to uh, ignore project fear, the mainstream media, that the constant disaster we were told that the world would fall apart if we voted to leave the EU. And then when I got elected um, as one of Nigel's lads to go to Brussels, it was worse. It was worse in flesh than it ever was on paper. It was an absolute sham bureaucracy, um, a tin pot um, dictatorship, really. And getting out of there was the best thing we ever did. Unfortunately, we had a Conservative government that didn't really do the job. So I was dispatched by Nigel to Leicester on the day that the withdrawal agreement was published, October 17, 2020. I read it on the plane. It's only 72 pages. I was on with Matt Hancock. Do you remember him? He hadn't read it. He obviously hadn't read it. He didn't know a thing about it. A brain like an aubergine, this fella. I could tell that before COVID. It's like, you could tell straight away on fishing, on Northern Ireland, on the level playing field, on taxation. It wasn't a Brexit. So the first thing was we didn't actually do a proper Brexit. They called us Brextremists. So no, no, the facts are the facts. We haven't actually left. And now they squandered an 80-seat majority. They've absolutely yeah. squandered the opportunity to get this job done. They left the cat flap unscrewed and Guy Verhofstadt and all his cronies are, are going to come scuttling through if Keir Starmer gets into power. Keir Starmer, the people's vote champion, reversing Brexit. The entire political establishment tried to cancel your vote. And still, they won't stop. David Lammy, yesterday, was saying, let's revisit freedom of movement. Let's revisit a closer alignment. They're going to try and change your vote. They're going to try and cancel your vote. I tell you, if that happens, Nigel, can you hear me? I'm with you, mate. Let's go back to Brussels. Let's do it. Yeah.